Sport welcomes you to the 1989 Victorian Basketball Association's Grand Final. Your host, Glenn Driscoll. Hello and welcome to Albert Park Stadium. I'm Glenn Driscoll. We have got one big match coming up for you in just a moment. A history-making match. It's the first time ever a country basketball team has made the Victorian Basketball Association's Grand Final. And the Hames Heritage Ballarat Miners have done just that. They're going in the underdog, of course, because they're playing the national side, the Melbourne Tigers. Lindsay Gazer's Tigers. It's going to be one hell of a game, and we're going to bring you the action right now. And, of course, we've got some joint commentators, and I'm going to introduce them to you in just a moment. The Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners down the Bendigo Braves and the Geelong Supercats in the lead-up finals to reach this historical VBA Grand Final. All right, my co-commentators tonight are uh, Brian Gorgian and Bruce Palmer. Brian, of course, is an ex-coach of the Ballarat Miners. How do you think they're going to go tonight? I think, I think they've got a good chance. I think they're going to have to have a good start. I think it's very important that they get a good start and uh, that emotion becomes part of the game because I think the, the Miners uh, play very hard and if they get a little bit of confidence up in this game, I think they'll be tough to beat. I think they've got some uh, defensive problems, some matchup problems. Ball uh, Melbourne Tigers are difficult inside and outside, which is going to cause some problems. But I think if uh, they can establish their game, it, it, uh, they could cause some problems. Well, Bruce Palmer, the coach of the raging North Melbourne Giants, Melbourne Tigers, where are their strengths? Andrew Gaze, of course, has won. Certainly, Andrew's a big strength, and he's a strength in any league, not just the VBA, but the National League. Uh, Dave Simmons and Dave Colbert, if Dave Colbert plays, uh, Dave Simmons is one of the premier players in the league. We got Ray Gordon, who's a very good player, and Warwick Giddy is, uh, both of those two players have been handling their defensive responsibilities, but, you know, it's the kind of situation where Ballarat has nothing to lose, and if they come out and they play hard and they play relaxed, you know, they'll be able to give Melbourne a good game. Fantastic. Well, there you have it from my co-commentators. We'll be back in a moment, but right now, what do the coaches think? Well, tonight, how are you going to approach tonight's game? Well, very seriously, of course. We respect Ballarat from the time that we played them early in the year. We're probably a bit lucky to come away with the points on that one. It was only a three-point game at Ballarat. So we know we're going to be in for a tough game. We've got to play a little bit better defence and be a little bit better organised in offence than what we have been over the last few games. But we're looking forward to a good game. It should be a good final. Well, we're feeling great, Glenn. Uh, whether Dave Colbert plays or not, or whatever they do on the weekends, really irrelevant at this stage. We're going to go out and play our game. We want to be the aggressors. We want to take it to them. You know, we developed a style over the course of last year and this year, and now we're going to stick to that and uh, give it our best shot. Okay. Ready for the tip off in the big game. The action's about to commence. Up it goes. Gaspar gets the knockdown. Cooks is in there. Picked up by Dave Simmons. And the starting five for the Tigers, uh, Bruce. Yeah, the starting five is the same five they start in the National Basketball League comp. You got Ray Gordon and Andrew Gaze in the guards. Dave Colbert, who Lindsay said wasn't going to be starting, he's starting in their forward position. Dave Simmons in the post and Warwick Giddy in the forward spot. Okay, Andrew Gaze has the ball now moving down the court. The Miners setting up a good defense, trying to keep them out at the moment. Uh, the Miners starting five is per usual too, Brian. Yeah, I think the big matchup surprise to me is that... Uh, that Glenn White is guarding Andrew Gaze, mm. and uh, I think that's going to be a big matchup. I'm sure Al's done that to keep uh, uh, Gary Gaspard out of foul trouble, and uh, I think if, if uh, Glenn White can keep uh, out of foul trouble and keep uh, Andrew Gaze under control the first uh, quarter, it'll, it'll be good for the Miners. Well, Simmons is at the free throw line, missed the first, going for the second now. Yeah, it's unfortunate you talk about Ballarat wanting to stay out of foul trouble. You know, we played 20 and seconds and they already have two team fouls. That, that could be a telling factor. Yes, it, exactly. Okay, they moved it up into their end of the court. Glenn White, the captain, has it, passes it over to Cooksey. Inside to Short. Shorts and gets the first points of the game. Two points to the Ballarat Miners. Good effort. Tigers bring it back down the court now through Ray Gordon. It's really good to see Ballarat's defense is extended and intense. You know, that's going to be a telling part of this game. I think one thing that's going to help Melbourne, they're used to playing a 48-minute basketball game, and we're playing, you know, four 10-minute quarters. Yep. They, can, uh, they aren't going to rely, have to rely heavily on their bench like they do in the, in the NBL. Simmons slam dunks it in for two points. Two each now. Chris Ash brings it up the court. Bit of trouble. Looks inside, and it goes out. Still a bit jittery out there. A bit of uh, loose ball handling going on. 
Yeah, I've noticed, you know, my two years involved with Ballarat, it, it's whenever the final situation comes, you've got to be very careful that the emotion doesn't carry over to fouls. And like, as Bruce has commented on, Ballarat's already got three fouls. And if they put Melbourne on the yeah. line early, it's going to be trouble. And there's trouble with Simmons getting another slam dunk down the court. He's going to be a handful tonight. Yeah, he certainly is. I, he's a big-time player. He's comprehensive. Yeah, he, he'll dunk plenty of balls if you're going to give him a free lane into the basket. Cooks to Gaspard. Shoots no good. Rebound by Dave Colbert, who wasn't going to play, but he's there. Gay shoots from outside. No good. And knocked out of court. And the throw is going to Melbourne. Andrew Gay shoots in. Warwick Giddy has the ball. Back to Gaze. Gaze goes. And two points. You know, Six one to the, two. One of the things about Melbourne Tigers, they train on this court four nights a week. They virtually live in this court. They've got a real familiarity with this thing. They're going to have to find a way. Ballarat's going to have to find a way to take them out of their motion that they're so comfortable in running. Mm. They could shoot girls blindfolded, Bruce. Exactly. Well, it's a difficult thing for Ballarat. But White shoots the three, but way off target. Patrick Short tries hard, but Simmons takes the ball away. Oh, shot. Forced out by Pat Short. But it's a side ball to Andrew Gaze. Warwick Giddy tries. Good defense from Gary Gaspard, but the referee stopped the play. It's, it's the type of foul that really is a cheap foul for Gary to be given yeah. up. He's got to know the personnel. Warwick Giddy is not a great scorer. You, you can give, him, give room on him, but you don't want to be caught reaching for the ball, even if it's not a foul that attracts the attention of the referees and get yourself in trouble. Dave Colbert shoots from outside and gets it. 9-2 to two the score at the moment. The Tigers, this is what we didn't want to see for the Ballarat. Hames Heritage Miners is a long break like that. Yeah, we've talked about early that it's important that the Miners stay in the game early. And in these next three or four minutes, it's very important that Ballarat pegs the score back. Exactly. Got the side ball now. Chris Ash has it. Bit of movement taken by Glenn White. Over to Pat Short. Short looks into Gaspard. Gaspard tries for the shot. Comes out oh. and rebounded. <laughs> An assist by Cookie. What a good move. I think, Glenn, I think it's very important that the Ballarat starts getting the ball inside to Eric. He hasn't touched the ball on offense yet, and I think that's important to make uh, Simmons play some defense here. Yeah, he seems to be left alone, too. They're not uh, paying him that much attention as yet, the Tigers. Gay scores 11-4. to four. Cooks has the ball at the moment, looking inside for a bit of help. Gives it over to Whiting on the sidelines, back to Chris Ash. Ash back into Cooksey. Cooksey goes up. This is now, the Glenn, score. I think there's a situation we're talking about. If we can get Simmons in foul trouble, that will really equalize the inside game. And I think Simmons is foul prone, and that's the first time now Ballarat's gone inside to Eric, and he's drawn the foul, and he's going to the line to shoot, yeah. too. It's a good sign good. for Ballarat. It's uh, another thing. Eric Cooks is an NBA quality player. He's, he's a national quality player, and he does make great post position. I think Ballarat's going to have to exploit one of their real strengths and go to Eric. Mm hmm Shoots, misses a second, rebound, goes to Warwick Giddy, hands it over to Andrew Gaze, is another one called. Now, that, now that's going to put Ballarat in a, in a fickle spot because they're now going one and one. Yep. If they've only played three minutes of basketball every time down the court now, this is going to have to soften up their defense. Five team fouls. Gaze to the line. This is dangerous. You know, a a Andrew Gaze. In the spread court, it's very dangerous. You've got to play good spacing on him because you start putting him on the free throw line, it's like throwing uh, gasoline on a, on a fire. He's going he's gonna to really take off because he'll get his half-court offensive points. Goes for the second. And that's good, too. Yeah, Andrew's man. not going to miss too many free he won't throws. Miss many of those. 13 to 5, the score. They've got a good eight-point break. Gaspar comes up, shoots it long. Out, she pops, goes again. Once again, she pops, doesn't get the rebound this time. Warwick Giddy takes away as they move down the court. Oh, uh, a bit of good defense by Ballarat. That's excellent. a sloppy pass by Ray Gordon. Okay, Chris Ash to bring the ball back up into attack for the Miners. See, this is a perfect situation. Eric Cooks is wide open in the middle of the lane. He's probably their finest offensive threat. They got to get him the ball there. 
which they've done now. He gives it in the Ash. Ash goes up. It's just not going in the basket tonight. Cookie gets it, makes sure of it, puts it in for two. Great play by Eric Cooks. Eric Cooks is really attending the offensive glass, and he's causing the Melbourne Tigers all kinds of problems. Simmons shoots and makes it another two. 15 to 7, the score line. Five minutes 58 left in this first term. One of the features of the Melbourne Tigers offense, they'll go to the high post, they'll go to Simmons from the guards. They rarely go into the high post from the forward position. And it's something that Erickson have to do, denying him once the guards have the ball coming down court. He's getting it. That's a sloppy pass. Yeah, not white. Whitey gets it back though, intercepts. You go to set it up, Chris Ash attacks. Good over dish. to Cookie, and the foul's been called. I'm impressed with Eric Cooks, mate. He, he's a... He's got a lot of aplomb in his game, and he's got the greatest pair of hands, I think, definitely in the SCBL. He's a thinking ball player, Bruce, isn't he? Class player, mate. Big-time player. I think you look at the SCBL stats, and, and, and you wonder about, uh, you know, about Eric. And, and you say, I think the main thing about Eric and, and in coaching him for two years and, and what isn't in the stats is Eric knows how to win. Exactly. And I think he's proved that over the last three years. Uh, whatever it takes to win, whether it be rebounding, whether it be scoring, whether it be defense, Eric will do what it takes to get the win. And he's got a big three-pointer, the white man from outside, one of his favorite shots. That brings him a little closer now. 11 to 15, Tigers in front by four, Andrew Gaze with the ball. Simmons makes a move, but he ignores that one, gives it over to Ray Taylor. Back to Andrew Gaze. Good defense on Cookie, Bar uh, Cookie Man's part. Oh, good great. defense there. Gaspard. What's he calling it? Hey, mate, it'll do Ballarat a lot of good if they can get that man into foul trouble. And that was kind of a silly foul on Andrew's part. That gives him two in the first quarter. And I think an important factor, they're 15 and 11. It's 15 11. They're still in the ball game early. And we still haven't got Gary involved at offensively. If we get Gary involved offensively with Eric, I think you're going to be in for a hell of a ball game. Gary's looking inside, goes for a move to Cookie. This handles it, Dave Simmons comes out with a ball. What's he calling it? The referee is a holding for Side ball. I don't think the fans like that one, Brian. No, that was a tough call. Just as we're saying, it's two fouls for Andrew Gaze. That's gonna be a, a desperate thought problem for Al Westover and that Gary Gaspard now has his second foul. And we still got five, we're halfway through this first quarter. And they make it. What Ballarat has done is a very good job on Dave Colbert so far in the offense. They've really worked their denial on him. He hasn't really had a touch. That's right. Dave Simmons has moved in there, though. Get the rebound from the second shot. Score line is 16 to 11. Chris Ash brings it up the court, looks in, but intercepted by Simmons. He's a hot man tonight. Over That's to Gaze. Gaze shoots and drops it in for two. 18 to 11. They're going to pull this back, the Miners. They're going to regroup. Chris Ash looking for some movement inside the key, and Gaspard goes for it, no good. Simmons yet again rebounds off the boards. Up to this point, Gary really hasn't taken a good shot. And, uh, you know, they haven't really, in that in that play phase, they didn't really make Melbourne play too much defense. They've got to you know, let's, let's make them. It's one thing that you could say is suspect about the Melbourne Tigers is that their defense at times gets very lazy. Colbert from outside misses. They regain the, regain the ball, Gaze misses. Gaspard gets it off the boards, takes it away, hands over to Chris Ash. Glenn, I think another big factor in this game, and I, I know from, from my two years involved in, in Ballarat, you can't say enough good things about Pat Short. You just watch over the course of this game. I think Colbert's the fifth leading scorer in the NBL, and you just watch Pat Short. You just watch Pat Short over the course of this game. He's always trying, isn't he? Always in there. I mean, he's closing Colbert out. As Bruce said, I, I mean, one of the things, the main thing... Oh, uh, great, great move. Right. <laughs> the main thing is that Pat keeps the guy from receiving the ball, which cuts down his shot selection. And uh, he's doing a great job of that right now. Excellent action there from Chris Ash, who got the two points and now moves to the free throw line. That was top job, Bruce. Yeah, that was a great move, man. He, he withstood the, uh, the contact, focused his eyes on the basket, and put it down. I'll make a three-point play. So that's unfortunate. Those are bonus points that they got to cash in on. That's a, that's a question of, uh, you know, you got to lock in. you got to be focused on the free-throw line. 
13 to 18, the scoreline for the Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners. Back into the attack territory of the Melbourne Tigers. Warwick Giddy hands over yet again to Simmons, who shoots, misses this time. Gaspard rebounds, knocks it over, out of court. Andrew Gaze is going berserk with the referee. Uh, even this is worse. They throw the ball in play, it's in play. Ray Hunt calls the whistle. Oh, I see there's a substitution there. I want to go back to what Brian said about Pat Short. As far as this state's defensive players go, hey Matt, he's only six foot two, but he can defend guys at any size. You know, it's a it's a question of mental toughness, and Pat Short's definitely one of the big time defensive players. I think, I, Glenn, I think this is another big injection in the game. Anthony Hotchin now, in the previous game to get to the final, he made a huge injection into the game. And Anthony is one of these kind of players that can turn a game around. He can pick up the charge, get Andrew on his third. He's also capable of hitting that big three-point shot. So I'm hoping for something big out of Anthony here. Always adds a bit of fire to the game, doesn't he, Brian? Fantastic. Dave Simmons to the line yet again. Makes it. Uh, this is Simmons' fourth trip to the free throw line. It's going to be something that you really got to deny. Like we said earlier, you got to deny him from getting the ball from the guards because the court's so spread. He's receiving it right in the center lane of the court. Hey, I don't care who you are, you're going to have a hard time defending him there. Scott Henderson now on the court for the Ballarat Haynes Heritage Miners. Over to Ferry Hodgson. Bit of movement there. Cookie asks for it and gets it. Back to Ferry Hodgson. Into Gary Gaspard. Good spot to be getting the ball to Gary Gaspar with a defender on his back, close to the basket. He's awfully quick. I, you know, Ray Gordon's a good defender, but you can't play behind a guy like Gary there. Mm. What would you do now if you were Al Westover to try and keep Simmons out because he's uh, doing a lot of the play? I think I think uh, one of the main thing is I, Ballarat's definitely undermanned in, in the game, and I think they've got to give up certain things and take away certain things. And one of the main things they have to do is keep the Melbourne Tigers off the foul line. They got in the one-on-one -on -one situation early, and I don't think I don't think Simmons has hurt him so much on the inside post play. It's they've they've made blatant fouls and put him on the free throw line. They've got to keep Melbourne Tigers off the free throw line and take away the transition baskets, and that is where Simmons is finishing up, and it's hurting him. Well, I can see the Tigers have moved uh, closer though with team fouls. It's now six to the Tigers, seven to the Hames Heritage Miners. So. Sort of neck and neck in that regard. Score well, I, I think the, the, the importance is, is is how many times you shoot that one and one. And, and it, it is even now, but a uh, big shot by Anthony Hodgson. But the main thing it. is that Melbourne got on that one and one situation early, and they've shot plenty of free throws. And we got to stay away from that over four quarters. Well, we're only five behind now, 22 to 17. Travel. Travel uh, is called on. Ballarat has taken Gary Gaspard out of the game and put in a kid that I really like, real good athlete, Craig Gilbert. Yep. He does a great job defensively, and you know, for a kid, he's another one. He's about 6'2", 6'2 and a half. He plays well bigger than his actual size. And on the young three yeah, three three pointer. Oh. They're, they're punishing the Tigers from the three-point line, and it does a highlight. It highlights that they oh, are not a great defensive team. Cookie Seals goes all the way. Oh, shoots. Move. Bad luck. Didn't get it. Scotty Henderson rebounds it from the boards. Tries to get back to Cookie, but misses out. It's intercepted there. by Ray Gordon. No foul call. Down the line, Gaze moves in for an attack, shoots for the basket, and makes it two points. Mate, that's a big league move, under control, change of direction, and pulling up straight on a dime for the money. 24 to 20. Gray Gilbert. Over to Cookie. Back to Gilbert. Ferry Hodgson moves in, takes it. Oh, bad luck. Up the rim, rebounded by Dave Colbert, who's been very quiet. Shot selection here again. Now we're, we're, we're talking about a situation where we're trying to keep the game close. Yep over four quarters and shot, shot selection is going to be very important and here you go you take a bad shot and they get a basket on the other end there were two points down now you're back to six i know brian and i we vary in how we want to defend melbourne tigers but great move great pass by ferry excellent finish by eric cooks but i don't like denying those forward leads they have their court so extended with the high post man that you can't have any backdoor help we allow them to get that lead pass, and we'll defend in their half-court motion from there. Well, the pressure of the game has uh, built up a bit, bit more momentum there now, Bruce. Oh, he's called the basket and a foul. 
Glenn, I, I think, you, I mean, you, you look over the course of this first quarter and you watch over the course of the game what Pat Short gets done. And uh, you got a guy like Colbert, again, fifth leading scorer in the NBL, and, and Pat's kept him out of the game, and here he is picking up a charge, helping, recovering, closing out his man, and now he's going to the line shooting one and one. I don't think you can say enough good things about Pat Short, and I think he typifies what the minors are about. He's, Good hard work. He's so determined. Goes in. Oh, bad luck. You deserve that one. They got to cash in at the free throw line. If they're going to get those kind of bonus shots, they can't afford. I think they've already missed three or four shots now. You put those things on. It's a three-point ball game. Well, that that makes grand final winners, doesn't it? Making those shots that are easy set up for you. You've got to put them in to make it. And there's another. There's another silly foul. An unneeded foul. Team foul seven apiece now, 28 to 22 the score line with the Hames Heritage Miners six behind. Glenn, I think there's another situation where emotion can be positive and emotion can be negative. In that situation, Anthony's got to make sure he focuses his aggression in a positive way, and that really hurts. Putting Andrew Gaze to the line is an automatic two. Yep, you're not wrong there, Brian. Once again, Scotty Henderson, a bit of trouble, but gets it over to Shorty. What? No, well, What's that's he a calling call. You can't call over and back until the man has possession. He did not have possession, but they got to make sure they don't score here with five seconds oh, left. Intercepted by Ferry. Over to Cooksey. Cooksey goes to the basket. All Good right. work with the foul. That'll help. They got to put these free throws in. I mean, this has been a this has been a telling uh, factor for the Ballarat Miners. They got to cash in. They got to shoot 90% from the free throw line if they really want to have a serious chance in this game. And Eric is really, though I know he's improved his free throw shooting over the years, he has not been noted as one of the one of the better free throw shooting players in the league. There you go. Yeah. He doesn't make a liar out of me that time. <laughs> Hopefully he will this time, Bruce. Bad luck, but rebounded from Craig Gilbert who shoots, and the Hooter goes the end of the first quarter. And the scoreline is 30 Melbourne Tigers to the Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners, 22. First up, how did you see the uh, Melbourne Tigers court at that time, Bruce? Uh, it was very good. I mean, they, they cashed in from the free throw line. They cashed in on some cheap baskets on back doors. I think Ballarat's got to make a little adjustment. The emotion side, like Brian says, is very good, but you don't want to be giving them cheap fouls if you're contesting shots. If you're contesting a guy cutting through the lane, uh, you know, you can be put him on the line. You got to be aware of the foul situation. And if Ballarat pick up on that, you know, they can uh, improve their, their eight point deficit. Well, let's go to Huddle. We've got Lindsey Gaze there talking to his team. Get the ball inside and they're just as likely to line up. A couple of those kids can shoot them from out there. Anthony, you low. That's it. All right, Barry, you be the man, four man offense. And when you throw it in, you give them a target to throw it back to you, all right? They'll look for cooking in the middle. Run it in the <laughs> Most of the things that we're doing there, like the scoring rate is not bad. I'm thinking about the complete game. As we've been so far, not too bad. The terminal, the risk of some of the Working hard, Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Okay, there you had it, uh, the uh, Melbourne Tigers camp, and also the Ballarat Miners camp as they come out for the start of the second quarter. How did you see the Miners' first quarter then, Brian? Glenn, I think there's there's two big factors that the Miners are hurting in. We discussed earlier, the very it's very important that Gary Gaspard gets involved. In the first half, he was not involved. He didn't, he didn't get anything going offensively. He got two quick early fouls. That hurts. That hurts bad, and I, I think it's important that Gary gets involved in the offense. The second thing is, we, Bruce and I both talked about not getting in early foul trouble and getting that emotion carried in the wrong way, and a it did. A great tip off from Gary Gaspar to Ferry Hodge and puts it in for two points. Scoreline 24 to 30 in favor of the Melbourne Tigers. Oh boy, that's, uh, that's oh. an intentional foul. Good. Hey, this is the thing where Anthony Hodge can be of tremendous value. He's got a great athlete. The thing is, he's got to just now lock in. You can't keep doing that every time. He's got to pick and choose when to do that, make sure he doesn't pick up cheap fouls, and that ends up hurting the, the Miners on the free throw line. See, the Tigers have brought in Bailey and Purchase for this term. Hey, they can match in right here. He puts these two in. They get a possession. This could be a six-point swing for the Miners. 
I think we got another interesting situation here with Barry Stevens. Uh, Barry Stevens and Ashy have been brought in new to the club, and I think they've played big dividends. And I think uh, Barry will give uh, Eric added strengths underneath that basket and give uh, Eric some room to roam around. Okay, we've got a bit closer now, back to five points difference, 25 to 30. Scotty Henderson passes it over to Gary Gaspard. Back to Henderson. Looks out to Ferry Hodgson, back to Scotty. Gaspard looks in, shoots, and it's good. Two points, it's the closest we've been now. 27 points, Ballarat Hames, Heritage Miners to 30. Glenn, everything's positive the start of this quarter. Everything's positive. We've got uh, Gary with an early basket. We've got a couple quick steals from Anthony Hodgson. It's looking good for Ballarat. That's gambling a little bit defensively. You go to a 1-3-1 one, one situation with, uh, with the, against the Tigers, mate, and uh, they, they're capable of picking you apart at the three-point line. Cookie shoots. The hand in the face put him off. Taken away by Bailey. Goes all the way. Looks across. Over to Andrew Gaze. Sets it up. No good. Rebounded again by Bailey. Off the boards, Warwick Giddy and puts it in for two, 33-20, 35-27. Scotty Henderson brings it back up the court. Big Bazza Stevens, the human tree we call him. Over to Ferry Hodgson, shoots in for Gaspard, tries with a nice shot, but no Keeps good. Keeps alive, second attempt, Eric good. puts. Those are things, Gary Gaspard's, that shot attempt and the earlier basket he put in, he's under balance. They're not a high degree of difficulty shot attempt. Do you think Nurse could be still telling with Gary or not? No, I don't think so. I think it's just a question of picking and chooses his opportunities because his teammates are holding his own. Oh, good move. move. <laughs> a steal by Ferry, puts it in for two and takes a foul. Way to go. We talked about the positive injection of Anthony Hodgson. Now, Anthony Hodgson is very capable of turning in a just turning a game around. Now they're on a 1-3-1 trap, and it's totally confused the Melbourne Tigers. They've got three steals already in two minutes of basketball. Bad luck. Fortunately, Ballarat's not helping themselves by cashing in on the free throw line. Take the side ball, Barry Stevens to Scotty Henderson. Whistle gone. Well, there's been a fair bit of that on, on the part of Melbourne defensively. They, they spread, Bellrat spreads the court very well, and they make their cuts very distinct across a flash cut across the lane, and it becomes difficult to defend. You may end up putting some body on them, and so far they've been exploiting that weakness in Melbourne's defense. Move around. Eric Cooks with the ball. Back to Scott Henderson, who shots from the three. Bad luck hits the rim and out, but rebounded by Gaspard. Big rebound. Big rebound. That takes a well. See, now, done. Glenn, you got a situation just opposite of the first quarter and totally positive for Ballarat. We got four fouls on the Melbourne Tigers. And the thing I, I've always loved about Eric Cooks is he's got total confidence in his teammates. If they double team down there or put pressure on, he's more than willing to kick the ball out. Big move. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. 33 to 35, the Miners advance. Only two points away from the Tigers who bring it down the court. Oh, good intercept from Ferry. Oh, turns it over. Barry Stevens gets turned over. Barry Stevens should never be putting the ball on the ground. <laughs> Simmons dunks the two. The Scotty only, Henderson went the over the only top. time Barry Stevens should be putting the ball on the ground is if it's a crab dribble around the basket to get himself a better shot opportunity. That, that's just a little lack of discipline. He should chin the ball there, get his body under control, look up court and pass the ball to a teammate. One good thing about Ballarat right now, one thing that's encouraging, Andrew Gaze has got three fouls. They ought to be going to him defensively. Well, Simmons doesn't miss many of those, does he? Well, he's a highly efficient player, mate. He's a high efficient shooter from the field and free throw line. Okay, Miner's back into attack again. Inside to Scotty Henderson, no good. Once again, the man Simmons. Across to Ray Gordon, over to Bailey. And they score two. Good move. Good. The whole thing was set up, though, by Dave Simmons establishing the driving lane, making a defender come and stand between he and the basket, and he dispersed the ball very well to Rick Gordon. The thing that's very scary about Melbourne is they're so explosive offensively. And uh, Ballarat, you, you see, they keep getting in there. They, they, they nudge it back to two. They nudge it back to three. And Melbourne explodes. Great move. 
Good spin move by uh, Gary there, Gary Gaspard. Picking up Ray Gordon now, that's, that's three fouls on Ray Gordon. Those are two key players that are already in foul trouble with seven minutes to play in the second quarter. Ballarat's got to cash in at the free throw line though. I mean, they probably could be, they could have eight or 10 more points on their scoreboard if they were to hit a higher percentage. Exactly. Well, maybe this is the start of the good move with Gaspar putting in the first, goes for the second. And it's good. This is the time of the game. I'm sure Brian knows we talk about this a lot with our own respective teams that when you do get a team in foul trouble, you've got to really exploit that and either get a high percentage shot or you get to the free throw line every time down court. Okay, Miner setting up good defense. Can't let Gaze alone and he doesn't. Eric Bailey goes in, slips on the move. Across to Warwick Giddy. Back to Gaze. Gaze goes inside. Bailey shoots. No good. Big fight for the rebound, and Barry Stevens wins it over to Gaspard, but Gay sneaks in and takes it back. Simmons goes to the board, shoots. There's another situation yeah. for you kids out there who are watching the game of basketball. When you gain possession of the ball and you are far away from your basket, like Gary was, you want to put the ball right under your chin, pivot with a low center of gravity, and look down court under control, because you don't know where the defense is coming. They can get a hand of the ball, they can be there and force a travel or draw a charge. Once again, Simmons to the line. It's another bucket. Ballarat's defense is doing a good job of making Melbourne play instinctively. They're pulling them out of their motion, making them make a lot of long passes that allow the Ballarat players to close them out and taking a low percentage shot. Now they got to follow that up with getting on the defensive boards. Right, seven point difference now, and the Tigers pull away yet again. Scotty Henderson with the ball. They're trying to set up a good play. He shoots and makes it good. All right. 38-42, the Miners advance yet again. That'll give them confidence, Bruce. Definitely so, hey, They've been punishing them from the three-point line. Gaze well, tries. Anytime a team takes a long shot like that, you've got to assume if it's going to miss, you're going to have a long rebound and return. Ballarat's going to get all five players in the defensive board. Cooking! Uh. Slam dunk! Great pass by Scott Henderson. Uh, Glenn, we've got a 42-40 game. The Ballarat Miners have extended this 1-3-1 and trap and forced Melbourne out of their stuff. Oh, wow. Brilliant! Hey, Eric put his stamp of disapproval on that. Great pass. Go, oh, right. We've got a ball game here. We're making Melbourne Tigers play on their heels. 42-42 apiece. The Miners fight back. Simmons shoots. Goes in for two with an assist from uh, Dave Colbert. Glenn, I think I think we got to give Alan Westover a lot of credit here. I think Alan is the doctor of the 1-3-1. This 1-3-1 defense they're playing, Ballarat plays better than any team in the country, and it's totally flustered the Melbourne Tigers this second half. But it doesn't take them long to come back, though. Another two points to Dave Simmons. I don't think, Glenn, I don't think that's a contradiction on their defense. I think, again, we, the, Mel, uh, the Ballarat Miners have got to make sure they get a good shot down every time. And I think the second quarter, they've scored totally on transition baskets from turnovers and bad shots. And yeah. there we've got one there. Yeah. yeah. Way off line. There's, There's a careless turnover. I'm sure Bruce would agree with me. It's very important. We've discussed the importance I'll, I'll hold back here yep. a little bit of back chat on the court there from Dave Colbert to Gary Gaspard that Gaspard. was a good call he double dribbled yeah. yep he did I, I just think it, it's very important Bruce will, Bruce will, I'm sure it go along with me that when you're an underdog it's very important you get a good shot every time you get your defense set every time the Ballarat Miners get that 1-3-1 one, one oh, set look at they cause problems Guess what? Shoots Gary in, again. no good. Rebounds his own great ball. play, Gary. And great puts play. the bucket in. Oh. Hey, We've Gary. got Gary going. We've got a great ball game here. We've got a great ball game. This is hot. 46 to 44. The Ballarat Haynes Heritage Miners once again within two. Bailey looks close outside. Out. Got to close out Andrew Gaze. I, I get a little bit nervous when I see him roaming the court like this. Gordon goes in. And uh, it goes to the Miners. That helps. That helps. You gotta go back again and let's look at the foul situation. Six fouls against Melbourne, two against Ballarat. If Ballarat are capable of executing their offense in the half court, hey, they're either gonna get a good high percentage shot, particularly if they go at Ray Gordon, who now has four, Andrew Gaze three, 
I question sometimes just how much defensive intensity both Colbert and Simmons put in. Hey, they're either going to get it on the free throw line or they can get a good high percentage shot. Okay, back into attack. The Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners. Cooksey shoots. Good. No good. Cash in. That's three fouls on Dave Simmons. Glenn, I, I think you look at this second quarter, too, and, and you got to give uh, Barry Stevens a, a big credit here. I mean, that 1-3-1 is effective because they got him in the middle and it gives uh, Eric Cooks a better chance to roam. And I think, uh, as, as Bruce and I have discussed earlier, once they get that defense set, it's called caused Melbourne's all kinds of trouble. And we've got a great basketball game on our tans. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm a liar. Dave Simmons has two personal fouls, not three. Cookie goes through second and makes it. And yet again, a tied ball game with four minutes 11 to go in the second term. Its defense has really done a hell of a job. They've done a really good job of trapping him. Look at that. He's got to bring the ball up the court. He's probably covered about 70 feet of space. Mark Grace had to work there and gets the ball back. Passes it in. Dangerous. Dangerous. Hand to the face didn't work and they score two. Chris Ash brings it back up the court again for the Haynes Heritage Miners to go into attack. Looking for a bit of movement. White shoots inside, but he's covered by Gaze into Cooks. Cooks goes for a shoot. Well, well that is three fouls on him. That this is. Not, may not be a bad time for Allen to volley his defenses a little bit. Don't allow Melbourne a chance of getting themselves comfortable and finding a way, some av scoring avenues out of this 1-3-1. Start mixing it up a little bit with maybe a, you know, back there man-to-man, -man, change it when, when one, of their, one of the Miners score something to keep them off balance because if they do get comfortable in that they can end up picking it apart Ooh, he's way off that one Bruce discussed earlier it's, it's one of Eric's weakness is the free throw line and it, it's in I hope he gets this thing going here uh, it's particularly because he's going to go to the free throw line 14 or 16 times in a game and you, you know that's an extra 10 points if you're shooting you know, 75 percent he's going to get an extra eight or ten points a game Mark Gaze looks into Andrew. Ooh. Andrew's caught. Great yeah, defense. Very good. Go and well Andrew. backed up by Craig Gilbert. Oh, intercepted. Bailey spins out of trouble. Got to go back. Another thing for the kids out there. You're in a fast break situation. You have your driving lane established. Do not get rid of the basketball until the defense steps between you and the basket. And when that happens, don't pass the ball. Split. Keep it on the split court. Don't throw it cross court. It has a better chance the defense intercepting it. Excellent comments there from North Melbourne Giants coach Bruce Palmer. And it's a side ball to Craig Gilbert over to Chris Ash. The Miners move into attack yet again. Three minutes ten left in this term. Looks in a beautiful pass to Gary Gaspard. These two, Chris Ash and Gaspard, practice that move a oh lot. Oh my, look at that's what a slam dunk does. Ballarat's got the crowd on their side right now. There's another dunk. No, a three-point possibility. And gets it. Go, Miners, go. Wait, I'm, I'm impressed with Chris Ash. He's showing a lot of savvy in the point guard spot. And then you got Anthony Hodgson, who's wrestling him very effectively. Bruce, I, I'm sure you'll agree with me. The, the longer Ballarat stays in the ball game, they keep this thing close, and we come down to the way. It was very important that Ballarat keeps this thing close in the first half. Their emotion has been good. Their defensive intensity has been good. Their offense has been good. And I think if it comes down to the crunch and they're in the game, they're going to win this baby. There's something going on. They've just taken two points off the minors. Well, I think it might be a situation. It gets awfully loud down there at floor level. The horn may have signaled a substitution or you know, the vi on a violations of that nature. They cannot just throw the ball in without the referees touching it. The referee's over at the uh, score desk at the moment debating the situation. Bruce, I'm sure you agree with me. I'm sure you I'm sure you agree with me. A timeout was called by the Melbourne Tigers. Once the ball goes on the side of the violation, the timeout's got to be respected. Yeah. Look at the foul situation right now. Melbourne Tigers have got 19 fouls to Ballarat's two. They've got some key people in foul trouble. Andrew Gaze with three, Dave Simmons three, and David Colbert with three, Ray Gordon with four fouls. I'm sure Al Westover will, will make that work to his advantage. Now the Miners looked a bit upset with that. Will that unsteady uh, their play? Nah, nah, nope. look at I don't think anything's gonna stop Ballarat now. I think you're in for a good basketball game. And I don't, I, you know, I, I hope that the people in Ballarat understand what a great job these kids have done. Okay, we'll go to Lindsey Gaze in the huddle. It'll work if I pull some fouls. If I add pull the fouls, that doesn't work. 
So we've got to accept that reality and move the ball without the dribble and get it down there so that we pass, circle, short pass. Keep the tag and so keep taking it to him, all right? Push well, the button right now. He's not up. Right on right right stuff. Hey, all right. Another positive talk in the huddle of the Ballarat Miners camp. Scores are tied, 48 apiece, three minutes to go in this second term. Nine team fouls to the Tigers and two to Ballarat. A reverse situation from the uh, first term. And this is one hell of a ball game, guys. Yeah, Glenn, I think, you know, I think you got to give Al Westover a lot of credit. He's, he's done a great job of rotating his players and mixing up a big lineup and a small lineup, and I think he's done a great job mixing up his defenses. He, he put the one, he slapped the, oh, there we go again. again. That move is big, unbelievable. Big play. Chris Ash to Gary Gaspard, it comes off so many times and it looks beautiful. They're in front for the first time, 50 to 48. The Bellarat Hames Heritage Miners looking good. Mark Gays with the ball, shoots in to Andrew. Andrew's great defense by Glenn White. Ah, oh, look at that, keeps good him double. out. Good double. Bailey shoots from outside, no good. Cookie rebounds. They, Back to they've got Melbourne Tigers taking some pretty poor shot attempts. That's Great in. pass. And basket. Great pass. What I was talking about, drawing the defender into your driving lane, then dishing the ball off to your teammate. Chris Ash just gave a clinic in that. Colbert shoots, no good. Cookie rebounds beautifully. Goes Eric up the court. Brooks. Got Ash to the right. Goes all the way, called a charge. Referee calls a charge. Do you agree with that, Brian? I'll tell you, I think that's a horrible call. Yeah. And I got I don't think he was established. I think he got a six, seven star player taking the ball to the basket. I thought he was moving. I think that's a crappy call. And I'll tell you this, I think you got a Hoosiers situation on, on your hand. Now you got kids from the country playing their hearts out. Look at Colbert and Simmons have been totally freezed out. Marquez okay, tries from outside, the whistle goes. And it looks like a side ball to Andrew. I mean, it's one three one. I think uh, you know I, Bruce and I talked about it earlier. It's a tough, it's a tough defense to throw against uh, Melbourne Stolen with again. the shooting power they have. But it's worked. It certainly has, Brian. It's worked well. Cookie goes in for two. That Chris Ash has got a lot of nous, mate. He handles that ball very well. Of course, I'm watching Andrew Gaze defend him there in the extended court, and he doesn't want to risk picking up his fourth foul. Now he puts all his heart into it. Right. They tried to move it, didn't come off. I think a big key out of this, if that 1-3-1 one one is going to work as it has, good desperation by Craig Gilbert. Chris Ash tries. Cookie rebounds. Yes, Eric Fouls Brooks. called to the free throw. Again, Bruce, I think, when, I think when you throw Melbourne out of their offense, you start focusing more on their defense, and they're not a good defensive basketball team, and Ballarat is having their way with them. They're using their their quickness, and uh, they have Melbourne totally out of sync defensively. You know what else will happen here? Because Melbourne do rely primarily on seven ball players throughout the National League and the Victorian State League. If they get two of their players out of the court, they're going to be asking some of their role players to come off the bench and play a significant part if they really do want to take this title out. In for his second, and makes that one. Eric That's Cook's the type of ball player, man. He would make any team look better. He makes his teammates look better. Miners have pulled to a seven-point lead, 55 to 48. Corbett inside the game, score Good the pass. two in the bucket. Nice play, nice 50, play. 50, 55. The Miners are looking really hot in this term. He's an Andrew Gaze dangerous. You know, three-point line when he's in the open court with the ball, he posts up, hits the offensive boards. That's why he's such a great player. Chris Ash all the way for two. That's, that's one of the reasons why he, uh, that's his only letdown there. He's going to defend a guard out there in the extended court. He's got to be able to stay nose to chest. He had a free between run. he and the basket. I think Ashy, Glenn, I don't think we can say enough about what Ash has done for Ballarat. He's given Anthony his opportunity to play his proper role and Glenn White to play his proper role. Andrew Gaze now, it's crunch time. They got to stay in the ball game. And who comes through for Melbourne Tigers? It's Andrew Gaze. See, ideally, what, what Ballarat would want to do is would have gotten a quick shot up, not taking too long, well, at least a shot up, yeah. not taking too much out of the 41 seconds they had at possession so they can get another 11 seconds to get a shot up. Gives them a chance to get in, and they've got this pushing foul being called. I'm sure Bruce will agree with me. You know. We've got a situation now, they've thrown, and it was very important, I think it started with Pat Short, 
they've thrown Colbert completely out of his game. Every time he leaves his feet, he's whinging and moaning to the referees, and he's totally out of sync. Here's a guy averaging 29, 30 points a game in the NBL, and Ballarat has freezed him out of the game, and I think his focal point right now is on the referees, which is a great sign for Ballarat. Yeah, the Tigers look a little rattled at the moment. They sure do. This 1-3-1 has really flustered them. Uh, I would say this, it can be dangerous. They, they can't get in a comfort zone thinking that defense is going to be the panacea to win this game. they got to volley it a little bit because uh, Melbourne players are pretty intelligent and they're very talented, and they're going to find a way to dissect that if they don't keep changing it up a little bit. Some good defense put up by the Tigers here. Craig Gilbert decides to go all the way. Bad luck doesn't make it. And there goes right. to Huda. Well, what a great second term that was. Scoreline, Ballarat Haynes Heritage Miners sitting on 57. A two-point lead as they go to the rooms for the Tigers. 55, half-time score. And uh, a quick comment on the second term on the Ballarat Miners behalf, Brian. Well, Glenn, I, th I thought the second quarter was, was more like it. And, I, you know, one of the big things I worried about going into this game, I knew Allen Westover would have to go to the 1-3-1 at some point in the game. And he threw it on in the second quarter. And with their shooting power, it's a big question mark if it would hold. And it, it, it hoiled him the whole second quarter and brought him back into the game, which was a great sign. As well, Gary Gaspard got involved in that second quarter. They're in good foul situation. I think their emotion is right. It's stable. And I think the Ballarat Miners are looking very good right now. I think, uh, you know, I picked Ballarat earlier for an upset tonight. I think they've, they've been playing top-level basketball for three or four years tonight, and they're here right now to prove a point. And I think we got a Hoosier situation on our hands. I love that word, Hoosier. Well, yeah. Bruce, what about the Melbourne Tigers? They've slipped behind too, but they don't let the Miners get too far away, do they? No, they don't. It's going to be difficult for the Miners to pull away too greatly unless they get a couple of their key players fouled out of the game. I'm very impressed with the uh, Ballarat Miners and the job that the substitutions Al Westover's done, the, the great job that Chris Ash and uh, Anthony Hodgson and particularly Eric Cooks have done. However, I totally respect Melbourne Tigers. They got a lot of talent there that they're going to have to find some method defensively of stopping them. Now, if they can get Andrew Gaze, if they can get one or two of those key players in foul trouble, I think Ballarat's going to have a real chance in this game. You're going to change your mind, go for the minors now, are you, Bruce? Uh, we'll wait a little bit longer <laughs> on that. Okay, guys, we'll take a, a little break while the mid-court entertainment's on and uh, refresh ourselves. And we'll be back for the second half, which no doubt is going to be a fiery game. And I'll tell you, I'm with the Miners all the way. Up they go. And the, for the first time, Simmons gets the tip off. Gaspard intercepts, but the referee has blown his whistle. That's unfortunate. Glenn, Four I seconds. think you'd have to say a big part of the first half as well is what, what Ballarat's done with Colbert. Big time scorer, Pat Short started it, and they froze him completely out of the game, and I think that's uh, been a big factor in this ball game. Okay, we're just looking at the scores before, and uh, Cooksey's one of the leading scorers. Simmons, oh, outdone, but he moves back in with a bit of help from Warwick Giddy. An outside shot from Gaze, and he does it. No, if I'm defending Andrew Gaze, I want to play ear-to-chest denial when he does not have the ball. I don't want to leave him to go and help on any other Melbourne players. May I just also say, this is the most important time of a basketball game. Those first three or four minutes of the third quarter, you've got to make a statement with your defense and really assert yourself offensively. Too often teams come out and they're relaxed. They are still resting. It takes them those two or three minutes to, to get themselves into the flow of the game. Yep, and the Tigers have moved up to one point in front, 60 points to 59. Ashy passes over to Cooksey. Takes his time, looks over to Glenn White, goes for a three. Offline, Cookie there to rebound and gets two. Puts him back in front, 61-60 ball game. Bruce, I think you'd have to agree. Eric Cooks is NBL, SEBL, I don't care where you're playing. He is the quickest man in the low post of anybody in the country. Definitely. He's proven it tonight. Simmons has made a statement in the NBL, and Eric Cooks is showing him post moves in, the, in this game that he hasn't seen before. What a great move from Chris Ash all the way down the court to score two. Miners go 63 to 60. Look at it. we're talking about how this is an important time of the game. Yep. Don't get them on the foul trouble by silly fouls. I mean, 
reaching for the ball. He, he has he has no chance of having a good percentage shot there. Uh, you know, you, you gotta you gotta be able to play a little bit more intelligent than that. You don't want to be putting him on the foul line quick. They've already given up two team fouls. Colbert, I'm mean, to Ray Gordon. Back to Colbert. Inside to Mr. Simmons misses it. Gaspar goes for the steal but mishandles the ball. Big Ray Gordon moves in again. Colbert grabs the ball for a three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by Warwick Giddy. Oh, that's four on Gary. Ooh, that's looking bad Gary for Gary. Gary Gaspard now, mate. You know, I, I, I'd be wondering if I was Al Westover, do I keep him in? We yeah. played two minutes into this four, uh, third quarter. Uh, it looks like he's going to go with Craig Gilbert. You're going to need him when the money time rolls around. Undisciplined defense there on Gary's part the last two times. Maybe that maybe that third foul was questionable, but the fourth one was silly. Bruce, I think we've got the same situation we had in the first quarter. The Miners have come out very aggressive. They've got four fouls on the board early. Andrew Gaze is going to the line shooting three free throws, and this is just a situation we don't want. Second quarter, I think the one three one held the Miners down in that foul situation and made the Tigers run offense, and I, I just hope that the Ballarat Miners can keep them off the foul line. He goes for the second and makes it. And Gilbert has been substituted for Gary Gaspard. Oh, he cashes in on all three. Doesn't he what? 63 apiece now, another tied ball game. Seven minutes, 52 left in this third term. Chris Ash moves it back into attack. Over to Pat Short, looks in but intercepted. And stolen by Gaze, moves up the court. Three on him. Gets it back to settle things down. Back to Gaze again, goes for an outside shot, way off line. And Gilbert takes the rebound, passes it over to Captain Glenn White as he moves down the court with help from Chris Ash. Inside to Shorty. Shorty goes for a backward flip, doesn't help. Cookie rebounds, back over. Gay steals. Great saves. effort on Eric Cook's part. Great effort. I, I think uh, Ballarat have got to kind of settle down now and make Melbourne defend them if they do want to take advantage of the fouls. And they do want to get themselves. It's four team fouls to zero. I mean, it's a critical part of the game. Yeah, they seem to have come out in this third term, but it's a little over keen. Yes, and a little bit uh, without purpose in their offensive motion. I would right now really focus on going to Eric Cooks, trying to get Dave Simmons' fourth foul. I agree 100%, Bruce. You've got to get the ball down to Eric now. And I, I can't, God, I can't stress enough the importance of Pat Short. What a great job he's done on Colbert. He's taken Colbert completely out of the game. I don't think there's been an NBL game where Colbert's been in this situation. He is completely out of the ball game. And they are really a three-pronged attack offensively. And if you take one of those two out, you're in the ball game. One of those three out, you're in yeah. the game. More importantly, he, that is his fourth personal foul. Now they got Ray Gordon and Dave Colbert. I think Dave Colbert will be coming out of the game as soon as possible. Looks like Eric Bailey's prepared to check in for him. Bailey's a very competent offensive player, but he's no Dave Colbert. No. A side ball taken by Chris Ash. Looking for a setup. Shorty's running around. Over to Eric Cooks. He decides to go alone. Up high, doesn't get it in. Rebound to Dave Colbert. Across to Andrew Gaze. And up the court, the Tigers go again. Look for a big shot, but it doesn't come off. Gilbert rebounds. Needs a little help. Spins out of trouble beautifully. Nice Inside. pass. Oh. Nice pass. Yeah. Great Gilbert. But yeah. that was an excellent defensive play on Pat Short down at the other end. We have a timeout, Melbourne Tigers. That's we had a missed shot there earlier, Bruce, but I, I think it's right along the lines we were talking about. I think the Ballarat Miners are very aware of going at Eric Cooks. Okay, looks early. like we might be going into the huddle now to see what Al Westover has to say. Glenn, I think both coaches are making a point and making sure each time down the floor we got a close ball game here that you get a good shot at the basket. And I think there's been a lot of play early this third quarter 
that uh, you know teams aren't getting good shots at the basket, and there's been a lot of uh, situations where they could have done better. Indeed they do. Okay, back into action. Six minutes, 15 remaining. 63-65, minus in front by two. Dave Simmons looks into Gaze and just gets it up the rim. Tied ball game yet again. Intercepted and there's been a foul. Well, we had a pretty good angle of that. He was not out of bounds, but that's a break for the Miners. It is indeed. We're right above where that went out and it didn't go out. Pat Short across to Chris Ash. Of course, Eddie Crouch is the finest referee in all of Australia. I mean, hey, he, he's human. He's able to make an error, and that'll probably be his only error for this game. We usually don't give compliments to the referees. Cooksey gets two, but they've done a pretty good job up to this date. Chris Ash has really done a hell of a job as far as picking the defense apart. you got to get up and pressure him because he's a very good passer. He's got great vision of the court. Warwick Giddy with the ball into Eric Bailey. Back to Giddy. Over to Dave Simmons, passes it to Ray Gordon, goes for a long one. No good. Cookie's got the ball, and he takes it down the court. Chris Ash to the side, passes to Glenn White, who shoots. No good. Eric Cookie. Cooks. Oh, brilliant maneuver. What a player. Eric Cooks doesn't give up an inch. Put it in for another two. Ballarat Haynes Heritage minus 69 to the Tigers, 65. I think, again, Glenn, you got a situation here with Ballarat. You got four local kids playing with Eric Cooks. You got Gary Gaspard on the bench. And they're hanging in there tough. Four-point lead. And on the score sheet, we talked about it earlier. Heart doesn't come out on a score sheet. And those kids got big hearts. Easy bucket here to Warwick Giddy after a turnover. Bad choice on Chris's part. Like I was saying earlier, you're, you're on a split court. Don't try to make that cross-court pass and transition because you're going to have to make it a semi-lob. The defense gets a chance to recover to it. Okay, the miners in possession. Gilbert goes for a three. No good. Way off course. Should have tried a shot there. Should have played up for something else. Andrew Gay is calling the shots at the moment. No run the first option here. A screen and roll play for Eric Bailey. Great defense. This is the second time Pat Short has fought over the top of that screen, which negates the effectiveness. <laughs> Man, you allow Andrew Gay to get the ball. You're really, you're really rolling the dice there. Scores are tied. 69 apiece. Four minutes, eight seconds left. Shot from short, hits the rim. Rebounds to Eric Bailey. Warwick Giddy looks inside. Ray Gordon shoots, and he's called a charge. Well, that'll be it for Ray Gordon. Yep. A very brief VBA finals appearance. Very ineffective on Ray Gordon's part. Fifth foul, and off he goes. I think five fouls will be the highest statistic number he will have tonight. <laughs> But then he can amply make up uh, Mark Gaze, number 11, Andrew's cousin, is, is a seasoned veteran who's been there a long time, and they're not going to lose a whole lot with Mark Gaze. Offensively, they won't lose anything, but defensively, they'll, they'll slip a bit. Hey, you should, you, you'd have to admit just what a job Pat Short and what a play he's had. It's not on the statistics, but what he's done. How many times he's, he's caused the charge, and how many, he's closed Colbert out of the game. I mean, I think it's, you know, you got a lot to say, and it, he's had a big, as big as part as anybody if the Ballarats are going to win tonight. Yeah, well, definitely, I would say this, though. Ballarats got to go to their strength. Eric Cook has, has done a marvelous job, and they don't have to get the ball to him so much as when their shots come up, have a look where Eric is in defensive positioning, because he's gotten a lot of second and third shot attempts when their shots have been Eric. Warwick Giddy with the free throw line and gets it. Five team fouls on the Miners at the moment. Two to the Melbourne Tigers. They've slowed down that bit anyway from the early minutes of the game. Doesn't get the second one. Rebound. Cookie tries. Knocks it back in. Stolen by Gaze. Gives the Tigers another chance to score. Cross to Warwick Giddy. Over to Mark Gaze. Mark Gaze sizes things up. Decides to go to Eric Bailey. Bailey looks in to Dave Simmons, back to Bailey, shoots. No good, gets it at Sith. Warwick Giddy's working hard under the boards and gets the two. A big basket, blue collar basket. He went hard to get that offensive board. Resisted the temptation of, of going weak against the, uh, the uh, contact. Big basket. Ballarat has gone back to their trapping zone defense. So Melbourne's applying some defensive pressure right now. Dublin Eric Cooks. Scotty shoots. Yeah, good in. basket by Scott Henderson. Two points. Scott hit. Henderson's down. He got a hit behind get the up, head. Get up, mate. This is grand final time. You don't go down unless you can't get up. 
He's up and at it, but that hurt him. Dan Simmons puts it in for two. He draws the foul. It looks as though he has suffered a shoulder injury by the way he's carrying his neck. He was hit pretty hard. And he sits down as a rest. I think these last two minutes are very important to Ballarat, Glenn. They've got to stay, hang here tight to start the fourth quarter, and I think they can bring Gary Gaspard back, and I think that's going to that's gonna tell the tale. They've got to hang tough these last two minutes. Here's danger. Okay, shoots in Eric Bailey, who moves in, throws the ball, loses it. Loses Take it him. with an unnecessary pass. I mean, you know, he had to try to put a little bit too much panache on that. Mr. Efficient, Aaron Cooks. <laughs> He's a savior. I admire his game. Eh? He, very, very good player. He is a top man. Always thinking, always working hard. I think we spoke about it earlier. Whatever it takes to win, how many times is he in there finishing? Loose ball, he's got it. Crunch defense, big block shot. Whatever it takes, Eric's there. Seventy three seventy four the miners trail by one point and yet again big Dave Simmons goes to the free throw line. Glenn, I, I, don't, I think it's a, a big point here that uh, Ballarat has stayed in touch without Gary ba Gaspard in the game. You exactly. know, we've got three quarters in the third quarter. Gary hasn't played. They're one point down. If they bring him back in the fourth quarter and uh, he injects some offense into the game, we got a we got a miners win here. Tigers move to a two-point lead at the moment with one minute 51 left in the third term. Chris Ash brings it down to court to bring the Miners back into attack. Looks around, a bit of pressure from Warwick Giddy. The whistle goes. Foul is called and a side ball and Barry Stevens goes to take it. Barry could do uh, Ballarat a big favor by really attending the defensive boards. An outside shot from oh. Barry goes in. Anthony Hodge is <laughs> playing loosey goosey. Man. He's got ice water flowing through his veins. He's a dude. No playing the back it. line of that 1 3 1, which is the critical part of that zone. He's got to cover an awful lot of a lot of court space. Bailey shoots for two. Gets it. Well, that, that's his first field goal of the game. Eric Bailey is you know, a very fine player, but he has a t tendency to try to be a little bit Hollywood. Help! a little bit more than what's required. Uh, he's got the foul, pushing foul. Ashley's doing a great job of getting the ball down low to Eric. He's going to cause all kinds of problems for Melbourne down there. Let's hope Eric can make these two. He's had a lot of trouble on the free throw line tonight. As Brian said earlier, that's not his best part of the game. But uh, let's hope he can improve on this one. And goes in. It's amazing in, in knowing Eric when the free throws really count how many puts in and I think that goes again to quality Eric when it comes down to winning <laughs> and that's go. what we're about now they seem to go down he's a winner speaks for itself the Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners move 78 to 77 one point in the front Mark this yeah, one three Gaines one trap unattended. I would shade him a little bit and that's what happened the ball there Bailey shoots from the outside and makes it Puts him in front by two, 80 to 78. 46 seconds remain in the game. The Miners are going to try and get in nice front again. Pass. And the tree puts it in. Stevens makes two. 80 80, tied ball game with 36 seconds to go in the third term. Gaze from outside goes long. No good. Rebounded by Eric Cooks. Takes it down the court. 30 one seconds. He should, he should hold it. Agree, he shot. should hold it. He does. Pull he does. Out of there, Ash. He could Pull point out guard there. smart to take it out. Inside to Barry Stevens and intercepted. Ferry moves in, picks up the ball and makes it. Oh, still Goes too again, quick. No good. Still too quick. Don't need to shot at that time. 12 seconds remain. That gives the uh, Tigers another shot. And Mr. Marquez shot. does. Rebounds and knocked out of court. Shot was way too rushed. Hey, they got the score level. Every possession from here on out is going to be very important. They've got to be aware of the clock. They've got to be aware of the foul situation. They've got to be aware of who's got the hot hand. Exactly. Eric Bailey. One second to go. There's the Huda. No well, score. They got out of that without any damage. Very lucky indeed. But boy, what a ball game we have. 80 points apiece. Melbourne Tigers, Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners. And that uh, 
term itself, they started out pretty aggressive again, like they did in the first term, but then settled down towards the uh, end of that term, Brian. Yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about Ballarat tonight. A few of the things that I thought it would take for them to win the game haven't happened, and they're still hanging in there tough. I think this fourth quarter, if Gary Gaspar gets going, along with Eric Cooks, they're going to win this ball game. They play the best defense. I mean, they're playing great defense in this ball game, and uh, they're right in here with a good chance of victory. the start of the last quarter this is the do or die the all or nothing for the Ballarat Hames Heritage Miners quickly Bruce still sticking with the Tigers well I tell you I think the Tigers still have the talent edge but uh, with the efficiency that Ballarat has shown up these uh, up to the first three quarters uh, hey, they're right in the ball game they're right in the position they want to be now now it becomes a 10 minute game I, I I got a lot of respect for Al Westover he done a very very good job I'm just wondering how valuable it is to start Gary right now. Gary must play with intelligence. Don't pick up the fifth foul. They need him. Okay, the tip-off goes Tigers' way. They score. No, they don't. Gaspar takes a, it. That's a very big emotional play to start the fourth quarter. Totally in Ballarat's favor. Chris Ash sets it up. If uh, Miners can score now, it will give them added confidence to take it away from the Tigers in this last quarter. Cooksey works hard. Works outside to Ash. Ash goes for a long shot. No good. Rebound. It's tapped out. Oh, goes Tiger's way. What a disappointment. Gay steals it. No wasting time. Straight across to Dave Simmons. It's, it's, it's crazy. But, you know, each and every quarter that we've seen so far, the referees have called fouls that really the defense hasn't gained too much advantage. I think they're trying to make a statement like, hey, we're going to we're going to call it very tight here to start the quarter and let them get a feel. This is going to be important. You know, calls, uh, fouls, everything is going to be very, very critical here in this fourth quarter. Well, Barry then. Stevens must, must get on the boards for Ballarat. Exactly. Done some good defense work, but those boards, he's got to get up there, get those rebounds. I well, should be carrying his hands up at shoulder level right now and really be patrolling the lane. Gaze to cousin Mark. Mark looks across Derek Bailey on the outside, shoots the hand in the face, misses the basket. There you that's go. Very, that's that's big defense Stevens by Eric about. Cooks. Getting a hand, just make that little bit of difference on a miss and a make. Ferry from outside, three. Goes big. And given it, 83 points. Ballarat Haynes Heritage Miners lead by three to the Tigers. 80. Anthony Hodgson has been the delivery man up to this point. But a bullet pass from Gaze to Bailey puts it back two points and one point difference in the game. Let's go, Miners. We're getting a bit biased here, Brian. Hey, I'm, I'm there all the way. <laughs> I'm there all the way. Chris Ash shoots, hits the rim, rebounded by Warwick Giddy, passes over to Mark Gaze, across court to Andrew. Up to Big Dave, back to Andrew Gaze. Looks into Dave Simmons, doesn't set it up, gives it to Mark Gaze outside. Rebounded to Eric Cooks. Back down the court. Chris Ash ready to set up play. Gary Gaspard asks for it, doesn't get it. Cooks. I think it's very important now that Ballarat gets Eric Cooks involved in the ball game here. Indeed. Use the ball, make sure he gets a touch. No transition layup. Set it up and get the ball down low to Eric. Both sides have been making in the last couple of seconds some uh, fresh air shots, not making their baskets. Does that mean the pressure's on them, Brian? Yeah. A lot of pressure on here. Bruce said it earlier, Melbourne's gone all out tonight to win this VBA title. This is their NBL team, given everything they've got. They haven't Eric won anything Cooks. since 1975. They want this one. Well, I, we I, I'm going to say it again. I think we got a Hoosiers situation on our hand. These kids aren't going to give in. Gaze misses another three-point. A brilliant defense back there. And get the boards from Barry Stevens got uh, two points extra to the miners. They move to 85 to 82. Ferry goes for three. Well, bit offline they're this getting time. a little bit ambitious offensively. They're taking some shots that are not necessary. They ought to be running the offense. I've got to point to Chris Ash. Now, if you're going to be the point guard, that's a responsibility that is vested upon you to make sure that you run offense and you get your team a good high percentage shot. Now, Glenn, this is a situation I, I, I wondered about earlier. Now you've got Colbert 
and Andrew and uh, Bailey here on at the same time. Against that 1-3-1, one, one, it's going to be, di they got three per perimeter bombers out there at the same time. This could cause a problem. Already in this it's quarter, one. they've taken an exorbitant amount of three-point shot attempts. And if they keep getting that many, they're bound to hit 30%, and that'll bury Ballarat. See, I, I, I really believe now you got the 1-3-1 one, one going and you got these three shooters out. I think you, you might have to give Barry Stevens a, a rest and go back to your man-to-man. -man. That short would be a good injection right yeah. now. Yeah. Definitely. Well, now that, that's a foul on Simmons, a shooting foul. That'll put Eric to the line. That's his fourth team foul. I think you can isolate Eric Cooks on Dave Simmons and get a lot of value out of that because I don't think now, particularly with four team fouls, Dave Simmons is going to be prepared to play the kind of defense that's necessary for him to, to shut Eric out. Now it's very this is the kind of coach we're talking about in Al Westover. You know, here's a situation, we're up in the booth, it's easy to call from up here, but he makes the decision right away, and it's the right one. You give Barry a rest, and you bring uh, Pat Short back to match up to this perimeter shooting situation. Al's reacting to what every Lindsay does, and he's doing a great job. Al's a very fine coach. Very fine coach. I've had a pleasure of playing alongside Al back in the United States, playing along with him in the Melbourne Tigers, along with Brian. And I, I was very fortunate to have Al play for me. It was like having a, a, a coach on the floor when we were together at Dananong. And he's been a very big asset and a great addition to the Ballarat program, taken over from Brian. Oh, G Gaspar took his eyes off the ball. It was stolen by Bailey and put in for two points. Tigers move up to the lead, 87-86. White down to Gaspard. Gary's got to lock in. He's got to get his mind focused. You know, those kind of turnovers at this time of, of the game, with this magnitude of the game, you can't afford those kind of things from a quality player like him. Anthony Hodgson goes all the way, and he, he's drawn the foul. Andrew Gaze isn't happy. <laughs> Lindsey Gaze is not happy, <laughs> and that is a bit of a suspect call. Hey, maybe a no call. But definitely not a block in that situation. Warwick Giddy got a hand up. Warwick Look Giddy, at, from what I could see, he was set. Lindsay isn't happy. Look at that face. <laughs> it's the most difficult call to make in basketball. I mean, you're talking about milliseconds, who has position, who doesn't. But what you've got to always keep in mind as a referee is who is gaining an unfair advantage. And referee Hunt at that time thought, hey, uh, the defense there gained an unfair advantage. So I think these. it's important to note too, Glenn, that, that here we are at Albert Park tonight and we got the number three team in the NBL and they're given everything they've got to bring a Victorian title back to their club that's something they haven't done since 1975. Everything they got and Ballarat Miners are giving them everything they can handle. First time in history that a country team has made a VBA final and they're doing a brilliant effort. They're leading by one at the moment. They, Great defense. Oh, Brad Ferry throws his body in, but Bailey picks up the ball, moves in across, misses the shot, but he backs himself up, and the whistle's gone. He's counted the basket, though. Foul's called. Gary Gaspard goes to the referee, has a few Fouls words. Foul's called. You know what I'm seeing on both times right now, and it's easy to do. You're halfway through the fourth quarter, the last quarter of the game of the season, and a lot of emotions starting to pour out now, and although emotion's always good to have, it can also have a negative effect. They can't allow referees' decisions now to cloud their execution. Comes Bailey to the free throw line. It draws the game. Sorry, puts them uh, two points up now. 92 88. Five minutes 32 remains in the final quarter. Chris Ash moves the miners back into attack across to Anthony Hodgson. Chris Ash moving all around the court, goes for Cooks. He's got a brilliant intercept by Eric Bailey. I think, uh, I think Ashy's done a great job of focusing in on Eric in the low post all, all night. Excuse me. My pleasure. <laughs> Ash with a side ball, Brian. Cross to Cooksey. Passes it back to Chris Ash. There's another kid we've talked about all night. Crunch time. There's Pat Short, man. There's, there's no doubt about it. Right in line of defense. Colbert can't receive the ball. Look, Look at, at his him, man. He, he is, harasses he is a the champion. ball. He is a champion. Look at his face. It says it all. Simmons shoots. No good. Rebound. There he is. There again. he is again. Can't Catch say enough. You cannot say enough about the Ballarat Miners' defensive intensity. 
bury that to two. Oh. Yep. Rebounded by Warwick Giddy. I Passes. think Gary's shooting right now in this fourth quarter. He ought to look to try to get some things around the basket. He has sat out so long. I think I think his Eric shooting from distance right now is a legacy of the fact that he has not had a lot of minutes in this game. 90 points apiece, Ballarat Hames, Heritage Riders, and Melbourne Tigers. And boy, what a ball game do we have. Eric Bailey outside. You can see it on screen. Look at Anthony Hodgson right now on to Andrew Gaze. He's on him like a blanket. Isn't he what? And he was making some nice faces at him before, too, which is putting Andrew off his game a bit. Crowd goes a bit berserk. Not uh, happy with that decision. Foul's called on Gary. He looked from this angle. We were way away from the play. That he had two hands on the ball, but in this situation, with four fouls, the importance that Gary has as a role player for Ballarat can't be in that position and go for a jump ball. Hey, just get out of his way, concede the two points. There's four and a half minutes left. There's a lot of ball to be played. So now Gary Gaspard out of the game. Replaced by Craig Gilbert. Well, as it turns out, it doesn't hurt him too bad. The very most he can get us one point out of that. Not often Dave Simmons does that, Bruce. No, it isn't very often. It's very more often too. when he misses both. And that's a big, big bonus for Ballarat. The minus Chris Ash all the way. Goes for the big basket. Gets drive. It. Big two dunk. Puts him in front. Nice big drive. Oh, what hey, play. We got, we got more of a Hoosier situation than you can comp. I can't believe it. This hey, Hoosier. Chris Ash takes it right at Andrew Gaze, mate. Hey, you know, you're an Olympian. You're the glamour boy here. <laughs> Big turnover, <laughs> Chris Ash on the breakaway. Again. Puts it in. Yes. Two points, minus two. We got two. a 94-90 ball game with the Miners in front. We're getting a bit excited here, Brian. Hey, it's easy to get excited in this kind of a game. Simmons shoots, no good. Assist, get on those no balls. good. Colbert shoots, the whistle's gone. What's the referee? Basket not counting. It is counting. Glenn, I think you got to focus on the point Bruce and I emphasized earlier, the importance of Gary Gaspar. Now, Gary Gaspar is a player that is in games and out of game. He gets in foul trouble and he's not involved. And I felt earlier in the ball game, if Gary Gaspar got in foul trouble, there was no way Ballarat would win tonight. And he really has not played a factor tonight in the ball game. And they're in front, 94-92. Let's, let's listen in on Al Westover this case this time. Help and short. Help and short. Don't let except for you ain't going to stay top total denial, all right? Total up. The other thing is, when the shot goes up, they're sending everyone to the board. Everyone has to raise and have some efficiency. And I haven't got time to have to have 10, 12 times now for this tonight. It's time down the floor. Listen to the crowd getting behind the Miners. Definitely a pro Miners supporter. I'm impressed by the comments of both coaches. They're talking about efficiency. Allen is given distinct instructions about defensive execution. And they're both well-coached teams. I've got a lot of time for Lindsey Gaze, too. I mean, he's, he's been my mentor since I've been out here. But, yeah. man, you, you cannot fault the effort of the Miners or the execution of the Miners. Al Westover and his players have played beyond themselves up to this point. No good, rebound by Anthony Hutchins. Glenn, Hutchin. I can't get away from listening to this crowd. This is a whole town, a whole community on a mission. <laughs> and I'm just hoping so much that the Ballarat Miners come through. They've done everything right, and uh, I think it's gonna happen. It's well, great. It's fantastic, Brian. It's three minutes, 22 to go. Miners lead by two points. They're in possession and in attack. Cookie Man's got the ball, loses it off the butt of the foot. But Ferry saves the day. Should not be a violation. Day. However, they've got no time on the shot clock. Now they do. Big and basket. Get, That's a big it. play. That's oh. a really sign of good fortune for the Ballarat Miners. Very smart on Anthony Hodgson's part to get the ball up to the backboard. Very smart indeed. A good thinking move, and it's paid off putting them a four-point lead at the moment with 2.53 to go. Gaze inside to Colbert. Colbert goes for the basket, makes two. The whistle's gone. Basket counts. The only thing that can hurt Ballarat when they hold a four-point lead like they did is to give them the three-point shot attempts, and they're putting them on the free throw line now as well. I mean, those are the most costly three-point plays you can get when they make the field goal and they get fouled. And I, uh, Dave Colbert isn't going to miss too many more free throw opportunities. Here we go. Glenn, we're at Albert Park. We're in downtown Melbourne. 
Listen to this crowd. Oh, no, listen to this crowd. You think you're at the minor dome. They don't score. Pat Short. Mate, you cannot put a value on Pat Short's defensive contribution. No doubt the Commonwealth Bank, where he works back in Ballarat, would be very happy with what he's doing there. If he kept, uh, kept eye on their balance sheets. Across to Anthony Hodgson, back to Chris Ash. Ten seconds remain on the shot clock. Chris Ash to Eric Cooks. Six seconds on the clock. Oh, oh and they turn it over. Gaze takes it. Oh, beautiful, but he's caught. Oh, Ray, <laughs> Ray Hunt didn't know which way. If he, <laughs> he didn't know whether to tie his shoe or wind his watch on that occasion, but hey, it works out for Ballarat. Points to Craig Gilbert for putting in a 96, fight. 96 94. We got two minutes to play. And in our possession, the Miners in attack. Cooksey with the ball. Good D by Dave Simmons across the patch shot. It goes for a shot. Doesn't make a rebound, Warren Kitty. Cross to Andrew Gaze, takes it back into they attack. They gotta close out that three-pointer, Glenn. They gotta keep... Uh, that is a charge. He called a charge. That is big time oh. defense. Things that scare me Look now. Look at Al Westover. Great defensive play. Ballarat minor mayhem. Ballarat minor mayhem. Timeout called by Al Westover. He wants to lock in. He wants to make sure they get a high percentage shot, or does he not? No, not now. Not now. Hey, Barry, great defensive job. Do not get carried away here. Do not get negative offensively, but no rushes of blood. Let's make sure it's a high percentage shot. Yeah, they're going to stay steady, keep their heads together. That Anthony from rush. outside. Ooh, that bad luck just bounces shot. out. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, hey, you've done a great job defensively. You know, you're not Sir Lancelot here, man. You're not, you're, just play the game, play the role. A rush of blood there from Anthony Hodgson. 96 94, minus by two. Warikini misses a shot, but the ref has blown the whistle, called a foul. One minute, 22 seconds remain. Ballarat Haynes Heritage Mine is in front by two. That's, now, I'm sure Bruce would agree. I, I think now, on this possession, we've got to go down and make sure Eric Cooks takes the shot. I think we've got to go down to him and win it or lose it on your big man. Get in a perilous situation. That's Eric's fourth personal foul. That's going to put a strain on Ballarat's defense. Their little men have got to have to scrap and ferret out the ball for them. You know, this has got to be one of the rare times, though, in a basketball game where the Melbourne Tigers are really, this is not, you, you can't say this is their home court. we got more Ballarat minor supporters here than Melbourne Tigers. A tight ball game, a minute 12 to go. Unbelievable. Come on, Miners, you can do it. Anthony Hodgson with the ball, looking around for moves. Gilbert makes it. Hodgson goes for three. Go in, go in, go in. It does! It does! Anthony Hodgson, man, he is six. delivering the goods. Oh, fiery, fiery Hodgson. This is Bedlam. This is Bedlam. I get a wobbly at the knees, Brian. Simmons moves in, makes two points. 98-99, minus by one. 47 seconds remaining. I would get a quick shot up right now. Got to do it. This is something Chris Ash, the point guard, has got to realize. Don't take a lot of time off the clock, which will allow Melbourne Tigers to use a full 30. Cookie goes! It's in! It's in! Two points! 33 seconds remain! They must. Melbourne Tigers must get a three-point basket. They, gotta they just the got to keep the three-point basket away. This is unbelievable. I would right now this double for Warren Kitty. Who's the stuff? Gase has got it. Keep Bailey out. Keep him out. It's no good. It's out of play. 78 seconds remain. Minus by three. 101 to 98. In this situation, Bruce. they can go and double their two, their three-point shooters who are Dave Colbert, Andrew Gaze, and Eric Bailey. The one guy you can give the three-point shot attempt to, maybe the two guys, is definitely Warwick Giddy and David Simmons. So you have that defender, those two defenders that are guarding them, they can leave their man, give up the two-point field goal, but go in double-team and put extra denial on the big-time shooters. Okay. Let's listen to Al West over the timeout. Going berserk, 17 seconds on the clock. Glenn, I gotta say, they're rocking, they are rocking Melbourne Victoria basketball. This place is going crazy, and I'll tell you, they've earned this win. They've outplayed them tonight, I think. They deserve the ball game. Now's not the time to be gambling. Lindsey Gates got coins on the floor. I wanna say this, though. Alan Westover is taking up the job. I don't mind patting backs the job that Brian over here, Brian Gorgian, has started. 
But what a great basketball community Ballarat has shown itself to be. And regardless of the outcome of this game, which Ballarat has a very great opportunity of taking out the first state title, and what a great effort on their part. Well, here we go, 17 seconds left. Miners by three, 101 to 98. No threes. Keep Bailey out, keep him out, hands up. Come on, guys. No threes. A big going deal. double, going double from Giddy. Gay shoots. Doesn't make it. Rebound required. Colbert pulls it down. That's the ball game. Four seconds to go. Three, two, one. Ballarat. 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 And I am so happy for this ball club. Alan Westover has come into a tough position, and the, uh, I think he's been underestimated as a coach. To go. He's done a great job. And apparently, we have five seconds to go in this game. What's happened? Well, this is something that happens an awful lot in this country. <laughs> I'm glad you'll come. Where the, game, we're not. <laughs> where the game is, one would think, is decided. We always have bunk equipment. I've had it happen to me in Wollongong where I'm out on the court celebrating much like them after a win. And I only think the difference is, is I had a technical foul called against me, which cost us the game. I That's still think, Bruce, I, I would have to say, Ballarat's not going to throw this thing away. There's no way in hell. What would you do in uh, L. Westover's position with five seconds to go? Just get the ball in bounds. the champagne, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe this. I mean, we're going to go through the win again, Brian? Uh, I think it'll be fun for Ballarat because there's no way. I know these kids. They are not going to throw this ball game away. I've got shaky legs. My knees are wobbling. I'm going to have to sit down pretty soon. This is excitement. Plus. They just got to throw the ball into their front court. Well, Lindsey Gaze already went over and congratulated Alan Westover and the Ballarat. Well, there you go. Hey, there it is. That's stupid. Call That's it. ignorant. That is a sign of an undisciplined player. Yep. Look at Lindsey Gaze. He's disgusted. His teammates would be disgusted. I tell you, who's a happy man is Alan Westover All right, right now. Look at him. Look at Al Westover. If we get a shot of him, that is amazing. Yes. <laughs> I'm happy for the man. Alan Westover has busted his rear end for the Ballarat Miners, and he's produced big-time dividends. Dave Corbett's looking real arrogant out there, but he has just lost the game for their team by pushing Ferry Hudson away, and it's in the bag, no doubt about it. Made a three-toed tree sloth would have had more sense in this situation they need possession they don't need a silly foul well there's a lot of talk going on out there i wish they get the game over we want to celebrate all right brian uh, i agree i i just think it's a just a compliment to everybody associated with ballarat you know again glenn i've been involved with the club two years this team has got a great deal of heart everyone said there's no way but heart does not go down on the short score sheet and they've done this, you, you really got to understand, they've done this. Gary Gaspard has not had a big game, and anybody associated with the sport would have thought that Gary had to have a big game for them to win tonight. Yo, he has not had one, and they've won. Dave Colbert. Dave Colbert. Now, the United States just went and tried out for the NBA. <laughs> That's it. Call game's over with. There it is. Good I have shot. to feel sympathy for Lindsey Gaze. This ball game's over. This ball game's over. And Ferry's putting the final nails in the coffin. Gets another shot, though. Uh, it goes to show hard work. I think the Ballarat Bar is going to be going tonight. I just have that Ready feeling. Right. Anthony Hodgson, Hodgson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I said he's there is another win. Hey, Final score, I have the most viable player tonight. Oh my I couldn't go past oh, Anthony Hodgson. Congratulations to the Ballarat Miners, the 1989 Victorian State Champions. <laughs> and once again, we see this incredible sight on the court. Final scores, Ballarat Miners 104 to the Melbourne Tigers 98. Beautiful, Brian, beautiful. And the great thing, Glenn, is, is Melbourne went all out tonight. There's none of that SEBL, NBL playing a lower standard team. The NBL Melbourne Tigers went all out tonight to win this Victorian crown, something they haven't done since 1975. And Ballarat took it to them on their home court. Well, it's a dream come true, Al. It's ours. It is a dream come true, Glenn. And uh, 
It's just unbelievable, Philly, unbelievable. I said to the guys before the game, I said Melbourne's been around for a long time. I said they've had their time in the sun, and now it's our time, the miners' time to shine. And uh, it's very bright right now. We'll be wearing sunglasses for some time. <laughs> it was, it's a great feeling. It was an all-out team effort tonight. Everyone performed brilliantly. Unbelievable. You know, like, with the pressure is on. We're playing one of the top sides in the country, and uh, we got a lot of young guys on the team, and they all came to play. And, uh, Part of our style is that we res respect nobody. We take it to them, we play aggressively, and uh, if anybody's going to beat us, they got beat us on the court. And uh, it paid off tonight. Everyone contributed, and it's just a great team effort.